Welcome to the FanDuel Punch Out. I'm Jason Gilbo, J Gilbo 11. With me is Russell Clay at Russell J Clay. Taking a look at tonight's 14 game slate here on FanDuel. There are some weather concerns to to be you know to to be wary of. Um, definitely check out Mark's forum post on our page. Um, he covers all the weather games and, and all the updates throughout the day. Uh, just a solid all around breakdown uh, and also quick responses on Twitter. So Mark does an awesome job with that. He certainly does. He likes weather more than you do. And uh, he likes weather more than you probably like anything, honestly. I, I think I can confirm he likes weather more than I like anything. What about House of Cards? Because I know you, you're a little late to the party, but you've been diving into mm. House of Cards. So how, what's the comparison there? He likes weather more than I like House of Cards. Whoa. That's, that's, that's Oh, a lot. yeah. No, that does say a lot. Uh, he does not like weather more than I liked Boardwalk Empire, though. I will say that. I can't comment on that one because I don't know. I oh, yeah. That's because that. you stink. <laughs> well, there we have it. That'll wrap things up with us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's jump into the first game here. Braves and Nationals. Steven Strasburg versus Mike fulte Um Here, I, I definitely don't mind the Nationals offense. Obviously priced up a little bit for most of those guys. But um, I'm definitely okay with paying up for the main bats there. Yeah. Um, Daniel Murphy, a little more reasonably priced here on um on FanDuel so I like that price um I like him as a play in general even if you do have to overpay you definitely like Trey Turner um and we kind of joked about Wilson Ramos but I mean 3400 here is a, is a really nice price yeah definitely much more reasonable here and Jason Worth is the one that kind of is the odd man out for me at that price so yeah these, this is definitely kind of a site dependent Nationals team I still like Trey Turner quite a bit at shortstop um and 3400 is a much more reasonable price tag from where he was at. He was close to 4K over the last few games. Uh, I'm certainly okay with that. Uh, Harper at that price, 4100 if he's in the lineup. Um, obviously, a, a tournament play. I, I kind of find myself leaning towards other directions right now um, than, than rather using Harper. For sure. Uh, as far as the Braves bats go, I'm not really looking to use anyone here against Strasburg. Um, just kind of an easy fade. Yeah, I mean, you want to look at Freddie Freeman, but 3K isn't enough of a discount to to average out the the bad play that it is, you know? Yeah, it definitely isn't. Uh, Rockies and Phillies next here, John Gravers, Jake Thompson. Uh, I like the Rockies' bats here. Um, and, and David Dahl is a guy we're both very high on. And, and at a similar price, they agree. He's kind of that mid-price outfielder, 3200 He's a guy I'm just looking to plug in as he's been consistent since coming up in the bigs and, and has an easy matchup against Thompson. Yep, I like it. Uh, 32 is a very reasonable price. You can fit him in. Pretty versatile. Oh, I like that. Even a DJ LeMayhew, uh, 34. I'm not fading him totally tonight. So I think this Rockies team is very stackable in a, in a rare away um, appearance. So I, I do like that. And obviously Arenado at 39 is in cash gameplay for me. Yeah, it definitely is. And I don't even mind the outfielders there, both the 3,800 if Cargo's in the lineup, um, Blackman 38. Uh, you just look at Thompson. I mean, um, didn't show anything to, for me that he's going to be a successful major leaguer in that first start against San Diego. Didn't yeah. miss bats. Very low uh, fastball. I mean, it was low 90s. Wasn't anything impressive. Uh, I'm just sort of looking to use Rockies, and, and I'm hoping they kind of go a little bit overlooked. Yeah, I agree. Uh, as far as the Phillies prices go, I mean, I'm okay with using Oduba Herrera and Mako Franco in tournaments. Um, but outside of that, I'm not really looking at anyone else. No, neither am I. Uh, Michael Franco at 28 is is okay. But um, overall, not really a lineup I'm looking to uh, to get a lot of fantasy production out of. No, me either. Uh, Rays and Yankees, CC Sabathia versus Chris Archer. Um, the Rays side of things, I mean, obviously a, a solid matchup against – CC for Cy and Longoria, uh, your more expensive options, but obviously given their track record and, and their success against lefties, that's obvious of, of why they're priced that way. I'm certainly okay with using them, uh, and I also know you're looking to kind of dive down also to those value bats. Yeah, Mickey Matuk, um, not as good of a value here, um, but still, point remains 2500. I'll take that and Forsyth cash game for me here pretty easily. Yeah, I like Steven Sousa at 3K. I think he's a reasonable high upside option in tournaments. Yeah, I agree. So, uh, as far as the Yankees go, um, the big thing is is Alex Rodriguez is $696. Um, I, I don't know what to make of it. Obviously, yeah, They did that on purpose, didn't they? 
yes, Russell, yes, they did. <laughs> <laughs> it, and it, it throws a little wrench into your thinking just because, you know, last game here at the Yankees, who knows what he does elsewhere at or after this. Very cheap in a tough matchup against Archer. They make you want to play him. I, th- I think it's a bait. Obviously, at that price, it's it's still worth a look if you want to go that route. I'm not going to knock you if you do it. Um, I'm actually just looking to avoid, uh, personally, just because it's my take to avoid situations like that. Kind of like when Kike Hernandez was $220 against Bumgarner um, or whoever it was. It, yeah. it just was a situation I just t- took off and was like, no, I'm not doing this. Well, I think this is a position where I think you can look at the rest of the Yankees and feel comfortable with it. I mean, I like Brett Gardner's price a lot more here, um, and I'm definitely okay with, with a Brian McCann as well. Well, while they were a little more inflated on on DraftKings, I I think they're definitely tournament plays here. Do you think – are you going to play A-Rod tonight? Uh, no. no. You're not. No. I, I, I kind of worry myself because if he does hit a homer, it's like you're completely screwed. You just got a $696 home run. But what's his absolute ceiling, I guess? I, I would uh, say one for four with a homer. Yeah. So it's like, all right, fine. It, really, if he gets anything, though, it's hitting value, though, right? At 700 If he gets a single and, and an RBI, that's hitting value. If he went up to the plate and struck out and Girardi said, that's your last at bat, and he went 0 for 1, he's hitting value. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. You don't want a zero. But it just, I don't know. It, it's funny. It's comical. I've seen kind of some banter on Twitter, whether it's um, – whether it's a joke, it's kind of a, a mock of the game. But let's 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 be real. Fantasy sports is, is supposed to be fun and supposed to be things like this. I think sometimes we all lose sight of that. It is supposed to be fun, and sometimes it's not. <laughs> no, oh no, no. Sometimes it's definitely not. Um, it's there's definitely more pain than fun. That's for sure. But yeah. what are you gonna do? Uh, it, you're, you're, I think you're on the Yankees bats a little more than I am. I like Archer uh, quite a bit. Um, I'm not really looking to use the Yankees at their prices, um, but I, I'm okay in the fact that if you want to toss them in tournaments, I'm definitely okay with it. Sure. Uh, Astros and Blue Jays, Francisco Liriano versus Joe Musgrove. Um, and, and we talked about this one on, on DraftKings. Uh, and really, I kind of all over our pods, just one big giant GPP game here. Uh, I find no cash game options as far as the pitchers through the hitters. It's just all kind of a, a GPP mess. But give me Musgrove at six in a tournament. Um, I'll definitely take that. That's, yeah, no, that's all I'm you. saying. Yeah. I, I, I like the, both these prices of the pitchers and given their upside. Uh, but obviously the floor is low. Um, it, it's just a matter of a points per dollar return. I think it could be fine coming out of the night. Throw in Musgrove, throw in A-Rod. Got a great start to your lineup there, pal. You got about five K left over for position. <laughs> <to do that. laughs> um, overall, yes, you still like Encarnacion, you still like Saunders, you still like Donaldson, but yeah, that six K, that's that'll throw some people off. Um, I I don't like this Blue Jays team as much as sort of they're being priced down. So I I don't know. It, they might be chalky, and in that sense, you might want to fade them. I'm not really looking to use them here at these prices. Uh, I think it's just kind of a fade for me. Um, and kind of the same thing goes with Houston. I, I think if I am paying up for guys like Altuve at 4K, who I, I don't mind Altuve. Um, Springer 4-1, Correa 3-9. They don't have as much to do over on DraftKings. Um, Gaddis at 3K is something I'll look to take a shot on. But outside of that, I, I find myself using them more so in GPPs on DraftKings than I do here on FanDuel. Definitely. Uh, Angels and Indians here. Um, Carlos Carrasco taking on Tyler Skaggs. Um, this is a game that's just kind of a washout for me. I'm not really looking to use anyone as far as hitters from this one. Uh, I, I still don't mind a Lindor or Napoli or Davis. N- Napoli's price is a little much, a little bit easier to accommodate, so I think he would be a guy maybe I target more so on Fandle than I would on DraftKings. Yeah, but again, you like Napoli at 38. That's a solid price, and obviously he's been on absolute fire of late. Um but I kind of like Skaggs, I, not in terms of of um, shutting him down, but I think he's good enough to sort of 
uh, limit the damage. So I, I'm not necessarily looking at that many Indians tonight. And as far as this Angels team, I'm not really looking at anyone here. Um, I do like Trout at 38, however. But overall, Carrasco, I just think that's a that's an avoid in general. I'm not touching yeah. Carrasco either. Yeah, I'm not really looking at this game as kind of a high offense potential. I, I think maybe just at most a couple of GPP shots with, with Napoli, Lindor, Davis, and, and then I'm moving on. Mm-hmm. Uh, White Sox and Marlins here. Um, looking at this Marlins offense, I think they're a little bit more reasonable here, actually. Uh, obviously, Ozuna is still cheap for a guy who hits lefties really well. Uh, Radon, you know, uh, up and down left-hander. I mean, he has been solid at times, has been completely blown up. Uh, overall, 360, well, 1.35 home runs per nine since last year. I'm certainly okay with Ozuna, and then if Stanton's in the lineup, is definitely a guy I'm looking to fire away with. Ozuna at 31 is is awesome, awesome for us. Um, cash game viable for me. Um, I, I'm okay with D Gordon as well, even though it's lefty on lefty. Um, but overall, I, I think this is a nice tournament stack for the Marlins, um, including Prado. Yeah, I'm definitely in agreement. Prado a much more reasonable price tag here uh, in comparison to where he was on DraftKings. He was priced up quite a bit, so I'm okay with Prado as a value kind of third base option there. Mm-hmm. Uh, as far as the White Sox go, I mean, uh, it's a solid matchup against Kashner. I, I don't mind some of these bats in tournaments just because they do round out some value. The Abreu price tag is a little bit easier to accommodate here at 3100 um, Overall, it's not something on a 14-game slate that I'm completely diving into, but I'm okay with, with some of the top half bats and GPPs. So really the only difference between DraftKings and FanDuel here is that um, – I'm more open to the middle grouping here based on the pricing, um, along with Todd Frazier and Tim Anderson. So while it's not a stack, I think you can look at one through five here and feel comfortable throwing really any of those guys in. Yeah, I definitely agree. I, I think there is some potential there for tournaments. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dimebacks and Red Sox, David Price versus Patrick Corbin. Uh, Red Sox bats are priced up quite a bit here. Um, we talked about the possibility of a, a lineup kind of switch around. Uh, with Betts being questionable, with Hanley being questionable for tonight's game. Um, this is very disappointed in you for not saying switcheroo there. That so, was an optimal usage of switch, switcheroo there, and you just let it I'm slide not, away. I'm not a switcheroo. I'm not a second-grade teacher. I, I don't what, do you, what, are you the Google, what, what are you, the Goo Goo Dolls letting things slide away? Very nice oh, 90s music reference, Russell. I'm proud of for that one. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Uh, the Red Sox here, they're an expensive bunch. Um, I, their offense has obviously slipped over the last few weeks. Um, I'm definitely okay with a rebound night here uh, against Corbin. Uh, Corbin, three, 355 Woba to righties, 1.23 home runs per nine since last year. Uh, I'm certainly okay with getting exposure to the top of the lineup and even some of the value there down at the bottom. Let me know what you think of that reference in the comments. Thanks. Um, what are we looking at? Uh, the Sox. The Sox. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right, the switcheroo. Um, yeah, no, we like them, but at the same time, I'm I'm particularly looking for maybe one of those guys to be out, hopefully not Hanley, um, and have one of those guys jump to the top of the lineup um, in terms of Aaron Hill or Brian Holiday or, or Ben Benintendi, as we've seen. Um, so that's kind of what I'm looking at. But, yeah, obviously this is a tournament stack lineup especially with Pedroia and Bogarts both at 3,700. Yeah, and Hanley's a guy I'm hoping he's in the lineup, uh, just given his yeah. success against lefties, that power's come up in the second half. Um, just come on, get healthy, get in the lineup, give me four at-bats, please. Yeah. That's all yeah. I'm asking. Absolutely. Uh, as far as the Dimebacks go, uh, if you want to make a GPP move with Goldschmidt, I'm fine with that. The Castillo price tag is much more reasonable here at 2500 if you want to do a GPP play, just given the fact that they have great success against lefties. Um, price giving up a fair amount of hits. Um, I'm okay with those two in tournaments, but that's about it for me. Totally agree. Um, pretty much Goldschmidt for me and and a runaway um, beyond that. <laughs> yeah, I'm not looking at anyone else. Uh, Padres and Mets next here. Paul Clemens versus Logan Vare. And um, the Mets prices here, I mean, obviously the top half is expensive. We kind of dove down as well. I mean, we, we figured one through rate, this is a fine lineup to target against um, Paul Clemens, who is just kind of a, a mediocre righty. Uh, I don't mind these, these top bats. I think they, they make for a viable stacking option. 
Totally agree. Um, and I think, as you mentioned, you can fool around with the end of this lineup too. Lots of cheap guys, guys including Travis DeArno um, at 21. I like Wilmer Flores. I like James Loney. I think you can roll with a lot of these lefties. This is just a bad matchup for Paul Clements. Um, uh, Jay Bruce is obviously going to be the heart of any stack, as I mentioned, on FanDuel as well, or DraftKings as well. Yeah, definitely. And, and Travis Dano, I mean, my, my favorite punt catching option on tonight's slate. Mm-hmm. Uh, as far as Padres go, um, I'm okay with Will Myers' price tag here. Uh, 3800 I'm definitely on board if you wanted to make a move with him. Uh, he's gonna certainly, be around. certainly more reasonable. It definitely is. As far as the rest of them, I, I like other guys at the same or similar price tags than guys like Drankowski or Dickerson or Schimpf. I'm, I'm kind of staying away. Yeah, definitely agree. So, uh, moving on here, you got the Tigers and Rangers. You Darvish versus Anibal Sanchez. Um, Texas, you know, some of their bats are priced up a little bit more, but still, you do have a couple reasonable options sitting in the mid three K range. Uh, obviously, I'll, I'm very okay with attacking uh, Anibal Sanchez. Um, you know, w- with some of these bats, I, I think Desmond's a, an interesting option. Same thing with Beltre, just given the fact that Sanchez really struggles with with both sides of the plate. Yeah, uh, we're obviously looking hard at this Rangers lineup. Um, I really like Beltre. I really like Desmond. Um, we see Sinsu, Shinsu Chu price down here compared to DK. That puts him in tournament and borderline cash consideration for me. Um, and at Lucroy as well priced down. So this one through six is all um, cash game viable for me. Yeah, in a friendly ballpark there, projected for over five and a half runs. I'm certainly okay with using the Texas bats. Um, I, I'm not using any Tigers here um, just nah. because of their prices. I, I don't like Martinez at 3.6. Cabrera at 3.70 is around other options I'd rather kind of use. Obviously, there is some home run potential from the right side, but it's just something I'm not really looking to get a ton of exposure to. I think it's just personally too risky for me um i I know the ownership will be low but i'm looking to make it (laughs) elsewhere that seems like the play that might work once in 10 times and that one time it works you're like oh i'm so smart and then you just lose the next 10 days straight because you're doing plays like that so that's that's what happens there so don't do that because then you'll get addicted to like hard drugs after that so Slippery yeah. slope, slippery slope, you know? Yeah, yeah. picking on Darvish is the equivalent to doing hard drugs. Heroin, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Royals and Twins, uh, your Donald Ventura, Kyle Gibson. Uh, talked about this game on DraftKings being kind of a, a very mediocre. I don't expect a ton of production out of both these sides. I, I do like the Twins bats more so here if you did want to take some shots against Ventura. The prices are much more reasonable like a Kepler so no both 3400 Dozier is still overpriced for me yeah I kind of don't mind this two through five here I think I'm much more comfortable paying these prices Um, I think this is a little more accurate and where it should be at so I I like this quite a bit um, in terms of tournament um, maybe a tournament stack Um, but overall uh, this game doesn't really scream 10 runs you know I don't think so either. And as far as the Royal side go, I'm off of them on a 14 game slate. Uh, this has been one of the worst offenses over the last you know stretch of weeks here. Um, at their prices, I like the prices around them much better than actually using Royals. Agreed. Uh, Reds and Brewers next here. Jimmy Nelson versus Homer Bailey. Um, Brewers side fairly simple to break down. Uh, I don't mind the top half of the lineup. I don't mind a Villar or Braun given their high upside. Um, I also don't mind uh, Scooter Gannett there at 3-3. Intriguing option against Bailey. Yeah, overall it's okay. Uh, but the pricing, they are a little priced up here. I don't know how in I am against like Homer Bailey. Bailey's been okay. Um, it, it might be a Chris Carter night. It might be a Chris Carter for me. Not everyone, but it might be a Chris Carter night for me. So, um, overall, I'm not too enthralled with this offense, but I think the normal cast of characters are where you kind of um, make your stack if you're going to go that direction. Yeah, definitely. And Billy Hamilton, much more reasonable price tag here on FanDuel. I was looking at that. I figured you'd be excited about that. 3400 big-time stolen base upside. Nelson's a guy who struggles with lefties. 364 will, but going back to last year, 1.38 points for nine. Billy Hamilton, a uh, guy who gets on and just runs for days. Once again, I'll, I just need to record myself saying this, but 
uh, up in the leadoff spot, that's where I, I like him to be. Uh, it really gives him an extra advantage. Much different perspective here. Less expensive than Cozart. I think with Duvall's price as well, Cozart's kind of not out of play for me, but pretty neutralized um, with some of the other options there. So I'm looking at this top four. I think you can fit that Hamilton, Votto, Duvall grouping together. And I actually feel pretty comfortable with that in the tournament. Yeah, definitely. And, and I like Votto. I mean, I talked about how drafting is paying up for first base. I, I'm certainly okay with Votto. He's just been so consistent. Uh, and as I mentioned, the numbers that uh, against Nelson for lefties is, is really high. So mm-hmm. uh, I'm okay with using those bats there. Definitely. Uh, Mariners and A's, uh, Ariel Miranda versus Sean Manea, two lefties on the hill. Um, for Seattle, I mean, we both kind of talked about, you know, not really using a ton of guys here. I don't like Cano and Seager at their prices. Uh, they're not quite the come down. Uh, but I don't mind Dayholi and Nelson Cruz still. Those are obviously the only two right-handers I'm really looking to use. And and even I'm really just in on Cruz here. If you want to throw him in a tournament, I think he's a nice one-off. Overall, though, not not seeing much coming from that lineup. I'm not either. Um, it, it's just, you look at Manet, he's kind of figured things out, but obviously still some home run potential for those right-handed bats, uh, but not the best ballpark either. Yep. Uh, as far as the A side, I think because they're pricing, it makes them a little bit more attractive against the lefty. Obviously, Jake Smolinski is the guy who I'm looking to use as a value cash game outfielder tonight. One of my favorite values on the slate. He always is against lefties for me. Um, and even Danny Valencia, Marcus Semien, I mean, really attractive price tags, even Chris Davis. Uh, against Miranda, kind of your average lefty, didn't show anything special. Uh, a lot of value here in Oakland. Give me that top four for sure, especially Smolensky. I mean, 26 for Smolensky. He's going to be starting some forest fires with that. I don't know why that came to my mind, but I don't know. Yeah. Sm- think of how – Jake where, the Pyro Smolensky. Where did I connect those dots? Because I thought of uh, – who's the bear there that prevents forest fires? Smokey the Bear. Oh, Smokey Smolinski. Okay, now I get why I connected those two. All right. I'm quite frankly, I'm a little bit worried about you at times. That makes sense. Bear. You know. Yeah, but the fact that you couldn't get to it right away, you had to try and figure out what got to that point. Uh, my my. Like you threw, lost it I, that quickly. Like I, I threw it in the brain calculator. And uh, it came out with forest fires, and I fired away with the, uh, you know? I think so. you've got a bad calculator up there, Russell. I think you need to get <laughs> Anyway, um, <laughs> I, I really like the most top. Um, Davis is more of the tournament guy, but I actually think this is a borderline cash game stack with Semi and Smolensky Valencia. Yeah, I'll, I'm certainly a big fan of that offense there against uh, Miranda. Really the top top four there. Yeah. Uh, Dodgers and Pirates here uh, going up against Yvonne Nova. The, the Dodgers price is much, much more reasonable here on FanDuel. I, I like him quite a bit here. Um, you got all these guys. I mean, obviously, Corey Seager, if he's in the lineup, is your most expensive. But guys like Justin Turner, Reddick, Gonzalez, Grandal, much more easier to deploy here. Yeah, give me Justin Turner at 34. Um, that's a tremendous price with matchup considered. Um, Josh Reddick, got to love that. Man, you got to hope Corey Seager's in the lineup tonight because I'd love to fill out that two through four stack right there. Yeah, certainly. Look at Nova, 372 Woba to righties or to lefties, uh, 1.68 home runs per nine. Uh, to right handers, uh, I mean, he's been really average, 325 Woba, 1.43 home runs per nine. So yeah. From both sides of the plate, one through six, I'm certainly, I'm certainly okay with just kind of rolling out plenty of Dodgers. Yep. Uh, as far as, as attacking with the Pirates, I'm not really looking to do so. The prices are starting to drop more here on FanDuel. Obviously, Marte at 3.5, Polanco 3.7. They're starting to kind of come down. Uh, but on a 14-game slate, I just kind of find myself no. avoiding. No. 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 Have you seen that vine with the kid? The dad's tickling him on the, uh, the uh, playground, and he's just no. shouting, no, no. Well, go look it. Go look it up. Um, okay. I'll do Vine. that after. Vine, no. Go look that up. It's funny. Okay. I'll definitely do that for you. Okay. Orioles and Giants, uh, Dylan Bundy versus Matt Cain. Um, I- I'm not the biggest fan of the Orioles price tags here. Um, I don't know. I-, I mean, I don't mind him in GPPs, obviously, still, because it- it's Matt Cain. And even though he's pitched better, I'm still okay with attacking him. Um, but with the-, with the Baltimore offense and them kind of you know slowing down here in the second half, um, 
I'm just kind of avoiding pretty much this game altogether. I I like I like Chris Davis, but he seems a little overpriced here. Um, I think this again, like you mentioned, I think they're just the prices and everything together on a 14 gamer is just not really adding up to me as as Oreo targeting the Orioles, you know. Yeah, I, I think Jones and Machado are the only ones that I'll take a look at. And Machado obviously still is paying up. Yeah. Um, but obviously the ballpark, it's not the greatest to hit in. Uh, in, in the Orioles' bats, I mean, outside of Machado, Jones has been been pretty consistent. But outside of that, it's been a lot of lackluster performances. Right. Uh, as far as the Giants, I, I'm not looking to use any of these guys at their prices against Bundy. Uh, maybe a Brandon Crawford at 2700 he'd probably be the only GPP option I could see. Uh, being viable. Yeah, Bundy's really been killing it off late. Oh my god, this is gonna be a running joke <laughs> till the end of the year. We're ending on that note. I'm not. I'm not breaking down the Giants. So we're uh, just yeah, leaving. I, I yeah. don't see a need to. So yeah, that's fine with me. Yeah, you can do your Bundy jokes. Yeah, I will. <laughs> that's gonna wrap things up here with the FanDuel Punch Out. Be sure to check out DaveFantasyCafe.com for all our great tools and content.